Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. The U.S. military continues to persecute chaplains and Christian troops. Members of the military are losing their freedom of speech. And a federal judge in Missouri may soon ban your right to pray in Jesus' name. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt. Dr. Chaps, this is the Pray in Jesus' Name show, and we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news? Let's get right to our first story. WND.com and my friend Jack Miner report that a battle is raging in the US military over religious rights of soldiers who defend American lives and values. An amendment in the recently passed budget bill of the military actually strengthens religious freedom rights for service members. And it was recently placed there despite President Barack Obama essentially ignoring a similar provision in last year's bill. The Chaplain Alliance for Religious Liberty reports at least five examples of anti-Christian persecution by the Pentagon this year. Example number one, a senior chaplain on a major stateside military installation was recently stripped of his authority over the chapel building, which was under his charge for his insistence that in accordance with federal law and military re regulations proclaiming the chapel as a sacred space, the chapel would not be used to celebrate marriages between homosexual couples. Number two, a chaplain was threatened with early retirement and then moved to an assignment where he could be supervised after he forwarded an email to subordinates that was a thoughtful reflection on the military's former don't ask, don't tell policy. Number three, at Andrews Air Force Base, two sailors were eating and talking when one of them mentioned he might wanna be a chaplain someday, but he didn't know how the new regulations allowing homosexuals to serve would affect that plan. Another service member at the next table who was listening to the conversation stood up and berated the two Christian sailors for talking about the new policy. Number four, a chaplain on funeral duty with some enlisted sailors heard them discussing how they felt it was unfair that fellow service members that chose the gay or lesbian lifestyle were allowed to choose their own roommates, but as heterosexuals, they were denied the right to do the same. Number five, at a service school that trains officers, a male service member sexually harassed another male service member through text messages, emails, phone calls, and visible confrontations but the targeted member was not interested in a same-sex relationship. So the offending male insisted the two would make a good couple. This harassment was reported, but no disciplinary action resulted. I wanna offer you a comparison. That's the report from WND.com. Here's a comparison of the current law, which was signed by President Obama in January of 2013 the NDAA section 533. This is what the law currently states, and then I'll show you what it's gonna to change to if this House bill is passed. The law currently states, the armed forces shall accommodate the beliefs of members of the armed forces reflecting the conscience, moral principles, or religious beliefs of the member, and insofar as practicable, may not use such beliefs as the basis for any adverse personnel action, discrimination, or denial or of promotion, schooling, training, or assignment. So they have to accommodate your beliefs. If you serve as a member in the military, they have to accommodate your conscience, moral principles, or religious beliefs. But does that include free speech? No. Because the new law, the proposed enhancement of that law from last year is the 2014 version. In section 530, it replaces some words and it says now, makes it a little stronger, except in cases of military necessity. In other words, during times of crisis or war, the armed forces shall accommodate the beliefs, actions, and speech of members of the military if they're based on conscience, religious principles, or moral uh, objections. 
This new language has been passed by the House of Representatives, or at least inserted in the House version of the bill, not yet passed by the Senate, not signed into law by the president. And here's a statement from your president, Barack Obama strongly objects to religious freedom for our troops. He claims this language would have, giving free speech to our troops, would have significant adverse effect on good order, discipline, morale, and mission accomplishment if soldiers dared to express their religious beliefs. President Barack Obama is now opposed to religious freedom for our troops. Now, isn't that a little bit contradictory? Let's discern the spirits here. You know people in the military, maybe some of your family members, maybe you're a veteran and you sacrifice and you see how we have sacrificed. Sometimes our own comforts or our own health or our own disabilities, our own injuries, our own lives. You've seen how service members sacrifice to defend what? Freedom for other people. Freedom of religion, freedom of speech for other people, but now we're denied that same right because we serve in the military? Listen, people do not forsake their religious rights just because they put on a uniform and serve their country. This is a demonic spirit of tyranny that is inside the President of the United States. And how do I know that? Well, besides the scripture I'm about to show you, I also wanna encourage you that I wrote this book, The Demons of Barack Obama. And in this book, it explains how he is the enemy of religious freedom. And this story is just one more example. You can find this book on Amazon and find 50 examples of demonic spirits that influence our commander in chief. Now, having said that, I want to invite you to look at a scripture with me. And let's discern the spirits a little bit. Is Barack Obama filled with the Holy Spirit or filled with the demonic spirit? Well, if he were filled with the Holy Spirit, he'd be promoting religious freedom, wouldn't he? Because the Holy Spirit says this in 2 Corinthians chapter three. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Let's pray for the spirit of liberty to kick out the spirit of tyranny from our president. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus name that you will liberate not just our troops, but our government. Not just our government, but our commander in chief. Father, we pray for Barack Hussein Obama, the president of the United States who hates religious freedom for our troops, who opposes religious free speech or actions that would be based on conscience or moral principle. God, bless our military with, with moral courage to speak up, to stand on principle, to do what is right and what is good at all times. Father, we pray you will help pass section 530 of that NDAA 2014. God give us liberty in Jesus name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, uh, an army sergeant is told he can't be a blogger because he's in the military. Fighting the culture war between church and state, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about defending religious liberty? I know you do. And that's why I'm asking you to take action today. Don't just sit there, but do something. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and sign a petition that we will fax to Congress on your behalf. In fact, there are three specific petitions I want you to sign to defend military chaplains who are under fire. The first is to support HR 343. This is a bill introduced in Congress by my friend, Congressman Walter Jones of North Carolina, to protect free speech for military chaplains who are sometimes punished if they use the word Jesus in their prayers. Well, if you know my story, you know that I was punished in 2006, uh, even at court martial, because I used the word Jesus in my prayers in uniform in front of the White House. Well, I was later vindicated by Congress who said it's okay for me to do that. But did you know 65 other chaplains are now suing the Navy? I was not the only person. Our second petition I want you to sign is to protect military chapel buildings, which are being desecrated. Christian altars, Catholic or Protestant, are being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies in all 50 states under this order by the Obama administration. Well, that deprives all of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines of a sacred worship space, which ought to be protected. And instead, they're gonna punish the chaplain if he won't turn over the keys to his chapel. Here's another petition I want you to sign, and this is to stop threatening court martial for troops who talk about Jesus. Even recently, the Pentagon is saying, oh, we're gonna threaten you with a crime of proselytizing. No, that's not right. Any soldier 
ought to be able to talk about his or her faith in Jesus Christ and to have that same religious freedom of speech that we sacrifice to give for others. When you sign these petitions, we will fax them to Congress and it's free. I want you to take action today. Sign these three important petitions at PrayInJesusName.org. Go there today. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Hello, I'm Dr. Chaps. This is PIJN News, and we're going to pray the news together. Our next story comes from freedomoutpost.com, who reports military members are being silenced from their freedom of the press. One need lo look no further than the current case of Army Master Sergeant Nathan Somers to find the answer to that question. Somers is a member of the Army Band who is currently facing Article 15 punishment for expressing his personal opinion about current events and politicians. Like most soldiers, Master Sergeant Somers has opinions about the state of our country and the reasons it's in, it is in disarray. But now many military bloggers are being threatened and silenced. The pinnacle of the period of military blogs was about 2006 to 2008 time period. Troops were encouraged to share their army stories and talk about their life. In fact, prior to the 2009 year, army leadership understood that not every story is gonna be a glowing account about how great military service is. But at that time, they encouraged and allowed free and open, public, open publication of military opinions. However, in 2009, something changed when President Barack Obama was elected and took office as commander of chief. Leaders stopped supporting troops if they were critical in their blogs of anything in leadership. It got to the point where the army wanted to literally censor what bloggers could and couldn't say. They had to run every blog through legal and public affairs channels before you could post anything. Anything critical was immediately denied. Writing about military life became harder than actually living it. Since 2009, the number of active duty troops that blogged openly plummeted. Leaders at all levels began coming down on bloggers. DOD Directive 1344.10 was a baseline document that recognized the rights of troops to have opinions on political topics. It recognizes that troops may express a personal opinion, even on political candidates and issues, but not as a representative of the armed forces. So what do you gotta do? You gotta quit your job to have an opinion? Well, Master Sergeant Nathan Somers was one example of a man who paid the price for exercising his free speech. Army documents obtained by Fox News indicate that Somers was told that his actions bordered on being disrespectful to President Obama and the slightest inference of disrespect towards superiors can have a demoralizing effect on the rest of the unit. They told him in writing, you should strive to express your opinion while being aware of the overall ramifications of your statements, the army noted. Somers' troubles began last April when he was told to remove a pro-Republican anti-Obama bumper sticker that was on his privately owned car. Quote, the types of stickers on your car were creating an atmosphere detrimental to morale and they were creating unnecessary workplace tension, said an officer who wrote him up. His attorney, John Wells, who happens to be my attorney also, once said that once he got involved, the military backpedaled and they uh, decided not to file a formal reprimand, but now it is common for leaders to actually send emails openly restricting their troops' rights to express any opinion on issues of national importance, even on their personal Facebook pages or blogs. You can talk about gay marriage, they say, as long as you support it. You can talk about President Obama as long as you praise him. You can talk about NSA collections of millions of innocent Americans' phone calls in violation of the Fourth Amendment. Actually, no, you can't talk about that, says the military. So that is our report from freedomoutpost.com. And I am so thankful for the courageous stand by people like Master Sergeant Nathan Somers. Let's discern the spirits for a moment. There is a spirit of courage that rises up inside of some people. And you can see it even when they're threatened, even when they're told, 
uh, you gotta be silent about something. There's a spirit of courage that rises up in them to speak truth to power. And I discern the Holy Spirit inside of Nathan Somers. God bless you, Master Sergeant, for taking your stand. And there's also a demonic spirit of tyranny that would come out of some places, perhaps even directed by the president himself. And we've seen it in the stories about NSA spying on your records, how they're punishing the whistleblowers, but now they're just punishing our troops for having an opinion. That's not right. That spirit of tyranny is a demonic spirit and it's in some people, maybe the domestic enemies of the constitution inside the Pentagon who hate the idea of freedom of the press. Well, freedom of the press is the constitution that you are called to defend when you swore that oath to defend the constitution against its domestic enemies, commander. Are you now gonna be a domestic enemy of the constitution by punishing your sergeant for having freedom of the press? Shame on you lawyers if you back up commanders who violate their oath to defend the constitution. Let's pray about that. Here's a scripture from Acts chapter four. And this reminds me of my story when I was a chaplain in the Navy. They called me in and they commanded me not to speak or to teach or anything at all in the name of Jesus. But like Peter and John in Acts chapter four, I took a stand and I answered, who are you Pharisees? Should we obey men or should we obey God? You judge. And we obeyed God and we disobeyed men and we may be punished for doing that, but we will be faithful and courageous to speak the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we pray for religious freedom, for freedom of speech, freedom of the press, for our troops in uniform. God, protect our military and every individual in their military, no matter what their religion, even the atheists, even the people who disagree with us, God, give them freedom. Let America be a place where a free exchange of ideas, political ideas, religious ideas are flourishing everywhere, even in our military. God, protect that freedom, pass this amendment to NDAA 2014, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break, and when we come back, a judge in Missouri is about to ban your right to pray in Jesus' name. Making your voice heard in our nation's capital, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about defending religious liberty? I know you do. And that's why I'm asking you to take action today. Don't just sit there, but do something. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and sign a petition that we'll fax to Congress on your behalf. In fact, there are three specific petitions I want you to sign to defend military chaplains who are under fire. The first is to support HR 343. This is a bill introduced in Congress by my friend, Congressman Walter Jones of North Carolina, to protect free speech for military chaplains who are sometimes punished if they use the word Jesus in their prayers. Well, if you know my story, you know that I was punished in 2006, uh, even at court martial, because I used the word Jesus in my prayers in uniform in front of the White House. Well, I was later vindicated by Congress who said it's okay for me to do that. But did you know 65 other chaplains are now suing the Navy? I was not the only person. Our second petition I want you to sign is to protect military chapel buildings, which are being desecrated. Christian altars, Catholic or Protestant, are being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies in all 50 states under this order by the Obama administration. Well, that deprives all of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines of a sacred worship space, which ought to be protected. And instead, they're gonna punish the chaplain if he won't turn over the keys to his chapel. Here's another petition I want you to sign, and this is to stop threatening court-martial for troops who talk about Jesus. Even recently, the Pentagon is saying, oh, we're gonna threaten you with a crime of proselytizing. No, that's not right. Any soldier ought to be able to talk about his or her faith in Jesus Christ and to have that same religious freedom of speech that we sacrifice to give for others. When you sign these petitions, we will fax them to Congress and it's free. I want you to take action today. Sign these three important petitions at PrayInJesusName.org. Go there today. I'm Dr. Chaps. I invite you to sign those petitions at PrayInJesusName.org. Our last story comes from e-missourian.com who reports that a federal judge may ban Jesus prayers in Missouri. 
The federal judge has denied motions to dismiss a lawsuit that challenges the legality of prayers at Franklin County Commission meetings. Presiding County Commissioner John Greisheimer and Franklin County are now being sued by an anonymous plaintiff who's represented by the ACLU, the Anti-Christian Liberties Union. A lawsuit alleges that Greisheimer led prayers mentioning Jesus at county commission meetings starting in 2011. Anthony Rothert, the ACLU's attorney in this case, said he is pleased with the US District Judge Stephen Limbaugh Jr.'s ruling on his motions. Quote, he refused to dismiss the case and found that our client has standing to pursue it, Rothert said. Moreover, the judge rejected legal arguments made by Franklin County in this case, Rothert said. County Councilor Mark Vincent said that those were only interim motions and that he does not think it's appropriate to talk about the case until it's over with, but the judge may yet change his mind. The prayers violated apparently the 14th and First Amendments of the U.S. Constitution, which affiliated Franklin County with one specific faith or belief, the lawsuit charges. So the ACLU believes the First Amendment bans prayer or bans Jesus as illegal speech. The county commissioner invited attendees to bow their heads and this somehow coerced participation in sectarian prayer, the lawsuit states. The county sought to have the lawsuit dismissed on the grounds of legislative immunity, but Judge Limbaugh, who happens to be the cousin of radio talk show host Rush Limbaugh, Judge Limbaugh denied the motion. The county's motion for freedom of speech said that Greisheimer had legislative immunity under the speech or debate clause of the US Constitution. Under legislative immunity, a local legislator is entitled to absolute legislative immunity for acts undertaken within the sphere of legitimate legislative activity. The county argued that the prayers were not outside of the legislative forum because they were uttered during the meeting. But Judge Limbaugh ruled that the content of the prayers, such as asking for protection of the armed services, was not functionally legislative and so it was not protected by the Constitution. The content of the, content of the prayers did not pertain to or uh, any deliberating or passing of any law, he said. The county also asked that the claims against Greisheimer acting in his official capacity as county commissioner should be dismissed. The commissioner was only acting in his individual capacity, they argued, but no. The education of this case has been delayed until the US Supreme Court decides a different case at the end of this year. In October of 2013, the Supreme Court of the US will hear the case of Town of Greece versus Galloway and decide whether Jesus prayers somehow violate the First Amendment of the Constitution. So that's the news. Let's discern the spirits for a moment. I believe there is a demonic spirit inside some forces in the government, and in particular, the atheist complainers who say, oh, I'm easily offended by the name of Jesus. When I hear the name of Jesus, it makes me squirm inside and I'm uncomfortable. Well, what is that thing squirming inside of you? Is that a demonic spirit? That maybe to make you comfortable, you need to renounce the devil and invite Jesus in and he'll fill you with peace and contentment and joy. I've, I'm filled with peace and contentment and joy every time I hear the name of Jesus, why? Because the Holy Spirit inside of me is a spirit of peace, a spirit of love, a spirit of God. And I pray that the Spirit of God is allowed to participate inside of our elected officials. Christians ought to be allowed to vote for Christians. And I pray that God will bless every member of every legislature. All of our leaders should be filled with the Holy Spirit and not a demonic spirit of tyranny that is trying to cater to the demonic spirit inside of the atheist complainers. Would you pray with me? Let's pray this scripture together from 1 Timothy chapter two. Father in heaven, we pray as you command us, as we are exhorted in 1 Timothy 2, we give all supplications and prayers and intercession and thanks, and we give this for all men. We pray for kings and for all those in authority, the judges, the legislators, that we may lead quiet and peaceable lives in all godliness and honesty, for this is the good and acceptable will of Almighty God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Father, we pray your will, your kingdom, and your love into our hearts and even the hearts of those who oppose us. God bless them in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we'll preview tomorrow's show. 
Discerning the spirits that rule our politicians, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Introducing FactsCongress.com. Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to a real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? It's free. Once your voice heard by multiple congressmen at FactsCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FactsCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FactsCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FactsCongress.com. FactsCongress.com. Can I take a moment to ask you to donate today? There are such important battles that we're fighting and winning around the country to defend religious liberty. How much is the right to pray in Jesus' name worth to you? Well, to me, it was worth a 16-year career and a million-dollar pension, which I sacrificed to defend Jesus Christ. I'm asking you to call us today, toll-free at 866-Obey-God, and make a donation. How much would you pay to defend religious liberty? Would you give $10 or $20 or $100? I bet there's some people who are watching who can even give $1,000 today just to help us stay on the air, to broadcast this into people's homes, to organize these petition drives, and especially, we spend thousands of dollars organizing rallies around the country and petitioning legislators. Please call us today at 866-Obey-God and give the best pledge that you can give to defend religious liberty and take a stand for Jesus Christ. We can't do it without you. Please donate today. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. Here's a preview of tomorrow's show. This same network, the same time slot. A Colorado first grade boy must be allowed to use the girl's restroom. Christian students are being punished for free speech against homosexuality. And an eighth grade student is silenced for quoting the Bible during graduation. God bless you, we'll see you next time. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again,